Thank you for joining us today in Jennifer Schaus and Associates complimentary webinar series. We're coming to you live from Washington, D.C. today. This year on Fridays, we're covering procurement playbooks. We'll take a deep dive into doing business with the federal agencies and departments with our panelists. On Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern, we will cover the FAR supplements or the procurement regulations for the agencies and departments. Fridays, we'll cover the business development and marketing aspects of the same agency and departments. The full schedule, the sign-up links, and recordings are on our website. And here's just a glance at what we've covered so far in our FAR supplements series. Um, as you can see, we'll be winding down the series on August 24th with the Veterans Administration. And here's a look at our Friday schedule. Um, again, we'll be ending with Veterans Administration on the 26th of August, and today we're covering Health and Human Services. Please note our summer soiree for U.S. federal contractors has been moved from June 20th to Monday, July 18th. Again, the new date is Monday, July 18th. If you've registered before June 16th and need a refund, please email us at hello at jennifershaus.com. Anyone can register as an attendee. We also have corporate sponsorships available and are expecting 100 to 200 federal contractors. The registration link is on our website under the events tab, or you can find it in my auto signature when I send out the recording from today's webinar. Government agencies and sponsors will be announced as they confirm. We hope to see you all on Monday, July 18th. And we'd like to thank our sponsors for this event on July 18th, C3 Integrated Solutions, a provider of level two CMMC certification, and also Brothers Mechanical, Federal Division, an engineering and commercial HVAC company serving the federal marketplace. And from the government side, we have confirmed attendance from HHS, Health and Human Services, which we'll be talking about in a few minutes. Please purchase your ticket on our website, again, under the events tab. And now we'd like to thank our sponsors who help make this webinar series possible. First, we'd like to thank the Virginia PTAC. Virginia PTAC is based out of GMU in Fairfax and offers free one-on-one -on -one counseling to firms in Virginia on federal, state, and local procurement topics. Online resources and group trainings are free with no restriction on business location. If you're interested in learning more, please use the links provided to explore what PTACs can offer. And a special thanks to the Federal Business Council. The FBC creates and manages virtual and in-person meetings and events to connect industry and government thought leaders, product providers, and solutions with government programs that use them. The FBC works with a variety of federal agencies to connect government and industry in the form of in-person and virtual conferences, training events, policy dialogue, and outreach. Over the last 40 plus years, the FBC has become a comprehensive resource for connecting industry and the federal government. Next, we'd like to thank Dastin. Dastin is an IT and cloud solutions provider working with corporations, the military and government agencies to lower their costs increase scalability, improve operational efficiency, and meet compliance regulations using targeted cloud-based solutions. Dastin is a certified partner of Oracle NetSuite, a premier tiered Google Cloud partner, and certified partner of Cisco, Virtue, AO Docs, and Authenticate. For more information about Dastin's services or to schedule a complimentary consultation, please email Joe Alston or visit the Dastin website. Next, we'd like to thank C3. C3 ISIT develops tailor-made technology solutions that increase efficiency, bolster productivity, and improve business processes. C3 is the leading provider of managed IT services, as well as compliant cybersecurity solutions for federal contractors. C3 works with defense contractors to achieve and maintain CMMC 2.0, DFARS and NIST 800-171. Contact C3 to learn more about the CMMC 2.0 Readiness Program. Contact information is on your screen. 
And lastly, we'd like to thank RLJ Financial. Founded in 2008, RLJ Financial Consultants is a customer-focused, quality-driven, minority and locally owned provider of commercial insurance brokerage services. Their services are designed to maximize your return on investment in managing the risk to your business. Call Roderick today at 202-832-1417 for a free consultation and insurance quote. All right, and today we're covering doing business with the Department of Health and Human Services. So let's meet our panelists. First, we want to thank our friends from FedMine, Ms. Archisa Meehan. It's great to have you with us, as always, Archisa. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having us. Thank you. And we'd also like to thank Mr. Joshua Blow from HHS for also joining us today. It's great to have you with us. Sure. Thank you for inviting me. Okay, and now we'll jump right in looking at the business opportunities and contracting trends within HHS. So Archiza, I'll mute myself now and just let me know when you're ready for the next slide. Perfect, let's go to the next slide. <laughs> so uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Archisha Meehan and I come from FedMine, a GovSpend company. Um, I currently am the senior federal product manager at the company. Um, FedMine is, um, you know, is a federal market intelligence tool that basically provides uh, simplified uh, access to the 18 federal data sets that are out there uh, in an easy to use platform. And we now work, you know, we are part of GovSpend and provide um, a very, another largest provider of data on the state, local and education market too. So next slide talks a little bit about our data sets. I'm not gonna spend much time on this. Um, and then the next slide also, I think we can uh, skip over. Um, so whenever, and for those who've heard me before know that I'm always gonna say, we really need to understand the agency, um, it's, you know, and what they do. Um, the mission of an agency and their strategic vision truly guide how the agency is going to be spending. So understanding the mission gets to be very important. And HHS's mission truly is uh, very simply put in that it is to enhance the health and well-being of all Americans um, and fostering sound, sustained advances in the sciences, underlying medicine, public health, and social services. Um, I truly think this, you know, tells us what the agency is doing and does. Um, let's go to the next slide where we go over their strategic goals. Um, these strategic goals are important as they do tie in with the way the agency is spending, the way the agency is acquiring, and the way the agency will acquire in the future. So that <clears throat> HHS's st uh, strategic goals include uh, protect and strengthen equitable access to high quality and affordable health care, safeguard and improve the national and global health conditions, strengthen social well-being, equity, and economic resilience, restore trust and accelerate advancements in science and research, and advance the strategic management of trust, transparency, and accountability. And I would tell you that, you know, we should pay attention to these strategic goals as when you start looking at their budget and the strategic plan, which I would really encourage everyone on the call to do that, it, it is very well explained and ties into what the agency is thinking of and wants to get to in the next, I want to say it's four years if I mistake not. Um, having said that, let's go into the next slide and talk a little bit about how are the contracts being awarded at HHS. Typically, they've been in the 24 to 26 million uh, billion dollars. Uh, in FY 2021 and um, going into you know 2022, we definitely see a pretty large increase in the spend. And um, of course, the, the reason for this increase is due to the pandemic, which has absolutely changed 
what the agency is procuring, how are they procuring, and it also goes into their strategic plan. So um, having said that, let's go into the next slide and understand a little bit more. Um, again, just to sort of clarify or talk a little bit about why is understanding the the trends important. Um, as you look into what what is happening uh, as a small business, trying to understand which agencies you should focus on, we always tell you to do keyword searches. Um, once you've done your keyword searches and you come across a few agencies that you need to focus on, we now want to start understanding the agency and create our agency playbook in a way. Uh, an agency strategic plan to either enter the agency or deepen your existing relationships. Um, and so a lot of the data that we are going to go over helps us understand how is that agency procuring? What is it procuring? What are the opportunities out there for us based on the data that we see that can lead to creating a strategic plan? So having said that, you know, we, we are looking, of course, at the agency as a whole, but I would always highly recommend that, you know, we filter results based on what you do. Um, you know, uh, use keywords, use snakes codes, use a combination of both to truly get a much better understanding of, in this case, who are the top agencies. So at HHS, we have a little less than 10,000 companies who won close to $40 billion in contracts last fiscal year. Uh, of course, we see Merck, McKesson, uh, you know, Pfizer, Glaxo, all of them as our, one of our top companies. Um, and a lot of this will be the COVID pandemic spend if we get into details. But this is just giving you a quick look at who are your top 10 companies. Um, let's go into the next slide. Uh, looking at how, you know, what are the various NAICS codes that the agency is procuring under? Um, you know, definitely uh, emergency and other relief services, computer programming services, and pharmaceutical are all in your top 10 NAICS codes, followed by R&D. So again, do pay attention to how that agency is purchasing based on NAICS codes. Um, and of course, I mean, you know, when you have access to some, uh, you know, to, to more data, use keywords and see where are those keywords, what are the various NAICS codes that can be used, uh, you know, by that agency. Um, also pay attention to what are the set of sites an agency might be using. Um, and again, with HHS, you definitely see a lot more happening in terms of, um, you know, the uh, with the small business set asides and the 8As and the hub zones and the women-owned small businesses, as also the buy Indian set asides that are being used by the agency. Um, so next slide. So further looking into uh, the agency spend, let's go for look at, um, you know, what how has the agency uh, awarded contracts to small businesses? We have almost $9 billion that were awarded to more than 6,000 companies with the Cherokee Nation Management and Consulting, uh, Modernetics, uh, uh, you know, all as your top 10 companies, including Tista and Technical Resources. So it's a pretty nice mix from what I can see of healthcare, computers, um, you know, uh, making up this top 10 companies. Uh, if we go to the next slide, we'll also further go in and see the various snakes codes that were used um, with computers and emergency relief services, uh, as also biological products uh, being in your top 10 snakes codes. But as you all know, I really like PSE codes because they get into understanding the categories and, categ and GSA's category management. So um, again, it, it is important to pay attention to uh, PSC codes. Um, uh, one NAICS code could be used, uh, you know, will have many differing PSC codes. Uh, a lot of times based on your keywords, the PSC codes might be a better representation of the type of work you do. So looking at your PSC codes is important. Um, and you could see, uh, 
you know, as an example, we also have advertising services as one of your top 10 PSC codes. Um, so pay attention to PSC codes as you're evaluating your keywords along with your next codes. Um, so next slide. So let's look at your top place of performance. Uh, Maryland, Virginia, California, DC are all in your top 10 uh, place of performance. Um, again, based on the type of work you do, the type of bureau that you might want to work with, the place of performance will vary. In terms of set-asides that are being used for the contracts that are being awarded as small business, you do see a very nice mix of all the various socioeconomic categories, including the hub zones, SDVOSBs, 8As, and women-owned small businesses. Um, as also we saw uh, the by Indian set of sites that do get used at uh, HHS. So next slide. So with the pandemic, we did see spending across many agencies change. Uh, HHS definitely had, uh, you know, to spend. Uh, uh, that you know the spend definitely did go up substantially uh, as we saw in one of my earlier slides in 2020 um, th more than 13 billion dollars were awarded as uh, contracts under the COVID uh, national interest action code these contracts were awarded to almost a little more than thousand companies with 22 percent of these contracts being awarded as small businesses, which is amazing. Uh, and in FY21, we've seen the spend go down a little bit, uh, but you could see that uh, contracts were awarded to more companies and there is a little bit of, and the next codes are relatively the same. So again, you wanna pay attention onto the contracts that are being awarded under the COVID National Interest Action Codes too, as you're analyzing the spend, uh, what the agency might have used, uh, you know, a spend given contract in FY20 might not be that important currently, even though the COVID spend is very much there, the priorities might have changed. So you want to keep all of those factors in mind. Uh, next slide. Um, the other thing that is also very interesting and we really should keep our eyes open and, and track uh, are the contracts that get awarded as SBIRs and STTRs, uh, especially when you are in the research and development arena, paying attention to some of this funding is important. Uh, as you could see, um, I have a, I need to fix that slide. But, uh, you know, in FY20, we have about 36 million that was awarded to 105 companies and all the contracts were awarded as small businesses. So if you are a small business that does research and technology, um, you know, do pay attention to the type of contracts that are being um, awarded as SBIRs. Uh, so next slide. We also, especially when we are looking at agencies such as HHS, we do want to keep eyes on the grants. Um, and of course, with COVID, the grants specifically against a few agencies has substantially changed. So do pay attention and see the type of grants that are being awarded. These are all opportunities for us to work, uh, you know, either as a teaming partner, to pay attention if new grants are coming up to create relationships, um, you know, so even looking at the grants data is important. Um, so the next slide. So I did talk a little bit about PSC codes and uh, because it is, it ties into GSA's categories. When we start looking at the top categories uh, at HHS, it's a little different than a lot of our other agencies that we've looked at with professional services, medical, IT, research and development, all being in your top profession, uh, categories. Um, it's also interesting to pay attention and look at how the contracts are being awarded between small and other than small businesses. And it tells you, again, you know, it sort of ties in with the mission, the strategic goals, and how the agencies will procure based on that. Um, so the next slide. 
And again, you know, paying attention to the various GVACs and IDIQs that are out there is also important, especially when you're looking at an agency and if they have their own vehicle, such as a CIOSP. Three, uh, you want to make sure that you're looking at the spend that is uh, occurring on those vehicles. It sort of will help you and guide you in creating your relationships, um, you know, especially with any on-ramps or just basic uh, relationships of teaming and subcontracting. So the next slide, uh, which takes me into subcontracting. Now, I want you to keep in mind that when, I, when we talk about subcontracting, uh, we are looking at data that is made public and the subcontract data comes from, um, you know, we get, FedMine gets its information from USA Spending, which I believe gets its data from FSRS. Uh, so based on that data, in FY21, uh, $1.5 billion were reported as subcontract awards by 177 prime contractors. Um, again, your top NAICS codes include a lot of computer, um, R&D, um, and surgical and medical instrument manufacturing. Uh, so you and you can always delve more details and see who are those primes and subcontracts. So let's go into our next slide. Um, my top primes uh, include Northrop, uh, Hewlett Packard, Deloitte, Lidos, uh, General Dynamics, um, uh, and the top sub awardees include Veterans Construction, Carasoft, uh, you know, 4A Consulting. So. Uh, nice mix of companies from what I can see, um, you know, when I'm looking at just the top 10. Uh, so the next slide. So we talked about how is the agency procured, procuring, you know, how much is it, how much is it giving to small businesses? What are the types of uh, products and services that are being procured as small business contracts? Um, you know, we paid a little, you know, we had a quick look at how is the agency procuring against all the various major vehicles that are out there. Um, but now when we start looking at opportunities, we want to make sure that we not only pay attention on the trends, but we also want to look at um, understanding, you know, where do those new opportunities come from? So the new opportunities that are totally brand new are going to come from your new initiatives um, that really depend and are guided by the agency's strategic uh, goals and mission and vision. Um, and it depends on the funding that they have. Um, it also depends on the contracts, especially service contracts that could be expiring that might be recompeted. Um, if you are, you know, um, yeah. and now where do you get that information? you basically get that information from reading uh, the budget uh, documents that are out there. They are filled with a wealth of information, um, you know, and then of course, looking at the exhibit 53s and 300, especially if you're in the technology IT field. Again, wealth of information in there, um, you know, I love, I love the Exhibit 300s because I think they provide so much more information, including in many cases, the program manager names. Um, also pay attention and look at all the pre-solicitations and source of sort notices that are released on SAM.gov. Uh, you know, use your keywords. These are ways that an agency is conducting its market research or trying to see what are the new solutions that are out there. Um, and then creating an expiring contract search based on what you do. Um, fine tune these searches based on keywords and NAICS codes. And, and um, you know, if you are in 8A, put in the incumbent 8A expiration dates because, uh, or look at specific GVACs and schedules and, and uh, you know, fine tune them in, in a multitude of ways to really create a pipeline of opportunities that are applicable to you. And then of course, go through your internal process of, of making sure which opportunities you really might want to go after. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the opportunities. If we could go to the next slide. 
this is a quick look at the major programs that are there under expert 53. It actually tells you what is the IT spend budget that has been approved and funded gets to be very important as you're looking and planning. Um, wherever possible, you know, go in and read, see who are the existing incumbents. There could be possible, uh, you know, subcontracting opportunities out there for you to work with those existing uh, primes. Read those exhibit 300s and understand how, how are the, you know, how is that program doing? Uh, you know, is it on track? Is it in trouble? Things of that nature. Uh, so the next slide. So this is your exhibit 300. Again, gives you detailed funding that's already been obligated. So you want to always track that type of information. Um, so let's go into the next slide. So a little bit about, so now let's look at contracts that are expiring. Now, of course, in my slides, my, I always have it very generic at top level, but you have the ability to get down to, uh, you know, doing the search based on your keywords, or on your next codes, on your socioeconomic status. In, I, I would say in a multitude of ways, a lot of times we'll have clients who will create expiring contract searches of uh, their uh, competition, uh, you know. So this is a nice way of looking and understanding contracts that are coming up. While I'm looking at just the next 12 months, I have, we have, you know, companies and especially the most successful companies are looking ahead 24 months, 36 months. Um, so, you know, the top, these are your top 10 contracts that are expiring where that are awarded as other than small business. Um, and again, a pretty good mix of services in terms of McKesson and, um, you know, uh, Carasoft and uh, emergence. So it's a, it's a pretty good mix of companies. Um, but let's go into the next slide and get a better understanding of you know, the, the place of performance where the contracts are expiring is a little different from the first slide, you know, the first few slides that we saw with contracts that are, you know, where the place of performance is in Texas and Tennessee and Georgia and Michigan are all coming up for renewal. Um, in terms of your top NICS codes, you could see a lot of emergency and other relief services, um, you know, computer design services, as also data processing and R&D. Uh, so next slide. And let's look at the contracts that were awarded as small business that expire in the next 12 months. Um, you know, we have quite a few, uh, High Point, Ventac, uh, Tista, all expiring in the next 12 months. Uh, next slide. With uh, you know the small business NICS codes again being more focused on uh, computer related NICS codes, some commercial and institutional building construction, facility support, and um, of course R and D, which we are seeing almost through all the categories. Um, also, pay attention to how are these contracts being awarded. If they are 8A sole source contracts, go in and see if the company's 8A is expiring. If it is, if the incumbent 8A is expiring, and if you have a relatively young 8A company, maybe there's an opportunity for you to tie up and, and work with uh, those companies. Um, so use this data to create your strategy, um, and especially as you work with the small business offices that are out there to help you. Uh, but have a strategy in plan before you, you know, go in and talk to the program managers or the agencies. I think that is important. Um, next slide. And then, you know, this is, again, I did talk about the fact that respond to source of sort and pre-solicitations. This is a quick look at all the pre-solicitations that, that are out there. I think I ran this two days ago, so you could see there are quite a few solicitations that were, that are out there with a response date in the next week or so. So um, do pay attention to these two. So next slide. So 
the HHS budget is something that has been released or proposed budget. Um, I would highly recommend that you know you pay attention to the budget, use your keywords to sort of focus in. So use your use the data that's out there to figure out which agency, which bureaus within HHS would be the likely um, bureaus that you might want to work with and then use that data to uh, also go in and understand the strategic plan, mission, and then uh, the budget details for those um, bureaus. Um, again, um, I think uh, that's it for me. Um, you all have access to my emails. Feel free to reach out to me either by emailing me or on LinkedIn. Um, so thank you so much for having me on. Um, Madeline, and I guess now it goes to uh, Mr. Joshua Blow. Yes, thank you so much for that great overview, Archisa. Um, now we're going to take an inside perspective from the government. So Joshua, the floor is all yours. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, uh, Jennifer and Melinda, for inviting me to participate in this event. Uh, and have an opportunity to talk to an audience about how to do business uh, with HHS specifically. So just to give a little bit of background about myself before I get started. Uh, I've been a contracting officer and contract specialist for about 15 years. I spent two years as a procurement center representative where I supported several different departments and agencies uh, at, in doing oversight and compliance reviews of their small business programs. Uh, and now I'm working at HHS in the Office of Small Disadvantaged Business Utilization as a small business specialist supporting uh, PSC, which is now known as the Office of Acquisition Management Services, so OAMS. So that's, I just want to give you a little bit of background about who I am. So I've been a, a contract specialist, a contracting officer, a PCR, and now a small business specialist. So you can go to the next slide. I'm gonna move through the next three slides very quickly. Uh, the slides basically just provide information or provide links on where you can get information uh, about HHS. The first uh, link there being to HHS's website. The second there being to the Office of Small Business. Next slide. And then this link here is to opportunity forecasts uh, that we post out uh, so that you guys can see what it is We'll, we are looking to purchase and or acquire uh, that's coming up. Next slide. And this is our scorecard. Uh, this is a link to how the SBA has rated us in our compliance with small business programs. Next slide. I'm gonna move through this one pretty quickly because I'm gonna talk more in detail about these events in just a second but I wanna give you an opportunity to look and see what's coming up at HHS. If you have not registered for any of these events, I would advise you to please register. Uh, so go out and make sure that you register for these events if you have interest in attending any of those. Next slide. So um, the, I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of the events you saw in the pre previous slide, some that we've had recently to try to give you an idea of how HHS engages the small business community. So we recently had our Access to Success Conference, the Small Business Industry Conference. Um, I think it was May 18th through the 20th. And so it was a three-day conference and we had uh, professionals and experts from throughout the government, different agencies, including SBA, uh, Department of Commerce, DOD, and even within HHS come out and do training for two days to both the government and uh, also contractors on how to do business with the government, uh, teaching about some of the intricacies of working with HHS, telling you who we are, uh, you know, what we do. Um, and then the last day of the conference was matchmaking all day. And so it was an opportunity for vendors and businesses to speak to the program offices and small business specialists who support them about opportunities and talk a little bit about your capabilities. So if you missed that opportunity, you missed a great opportunity to connect with us, 
but that is something that we're going to be doing annually. So I would stay tuned and look forward to information on our next uh, conference for next year. We host vendor engagement sessions the second Tuesday of every month. And so the previous slide talked a little bit about uh, what those sessions, what those sessions, uh, the previous slide told you when those sessions are coming up, the exact dates, but vendor engagement sessions are literally matchmaking all day. All the small business specialists within HHS, including myself, supporting a number of different agencies inside of HHS, sit and talk to vendors like you all day long about your capabilities and about upcoming opportunities. Um, so it's a way for you to engage with the small business specialists one-on-one. -on -one. We're making ourselves available to you uh, to answer any questions about some of the things you see on the forecast, to talk to you about capabilities, and even sometimes give a little bit of advice on how to reach out and engage uh, certain program offices, perhaps even setting up meetings. Uh, HHS office hours is something that uh, our office came up with so that small businesses could talk to the director of the Ozibu office. So we have a new director uh, within the last eight or nine months, Mr. Shannon Jackson. And he is the director of the Office of Small Disadvantaged Business Utilization within HHS. And so these office hours are times that he makes himself available to talk to small businesses about a variety of different topics. Uh, you will have his ear. If you've never registered for one of those events, if you've never attended one, I highly advise you to make sure that you get registered to attend some of those events. Uh, our Small Disadvantaged Business Alliance virtual events, uh, I work as a part of a team to work on opportunities for small disadvantaged businesses, and we publicize those announcement for virtual, announcements for virtual events. Uh, so there's a number of different ways to, to engage with HHS, uh, listening labs, uh, FDA, industry days and IH outreach sessions. CMS does, um, I think it's monthly. They do uh, phone, they do briefings, virtual meetings uh, where they, the small business specialist over there talks to industry on a variety of different topics and uh, discusses opportunities that are available within CMS. Next slide. The small business customer experience. So SBCX is a tool that we use to collaborate with the workforce and uh, assist uh, them in meeting our small business goals. And so what it allows you to do is it's pretty much a database where we store uh, small business information. Uh, you can, if I highly advise you register in SBCX, Customer Experience Portal. Please register your business. So what you can do is provide capability statements and information. It pulls over your profile from sam.gov. You can also include information on past performance, uh, outlining your experience with the federal government or any other relevant experience you may have. Uh, we use this as a market research tool within HHS. It's a very good way of identifying companies and businesses who have been somewhat vetted who are interested in doing business with HHS, who understand or at least know what our mission is. So if you have not registered in SBCX, please do so. You can go to the next slide. Again, register, create a profile, uh, and upload all the information on your company. I won't go over that again, so next slide, please. Uh, information gathering. Um, so the previous speaker spoke a lot about how to uh, identify opportunities within HHS. Um, I think I mentioned to you uh, the SBCX tool is also where we post our forecasts. And so Mr. Jackson, our new uh, OSDBU director, has worked with the HCAs to make sure that the forecasts uh, from the different agencies within HHS, uh, CDC, IHS, NIH, CMS, are all going to, and NIH, are all going to be posted and updated on the uh, customer experience portal, which is the SBCX website. So that's one way that you can find out exactly what we're looking for and exactly uh, the types of requirements that we're working on. 
Um, also, there's a list of the small business specialists and the different agencies and optives uh, that we support. Run the reports from FPDSNG uh, to see what has been bought. Look for information on expiring contracts. Um, you know, just a variety of different ways to find out what is HHS up to for uh, the upcoming or the current fiscal year. Next slide. Uh, learn what the acquisition strategy is and be in the right store. Um, find out how the government intends to uh, acquire the goods or services that they're looking for. The sources sought notices are a great way to start. Um, read those notices. And one of the things I wanted to say about that is for market research purposes, sources sought notices are what we use to help us determine whether or not set aside, specifically small business set asides are possible. Uh, we have to make sure that we vetted the rule of two prior to going with an unrestricted uh, acquisition strategy. So when you see those notices out there, I would encourage you, even when you see notices of intent for sole source, uh, to respond to those notices. Even if you cannot perform the full scope of the requirement, outline the elements of the scope that you can perform and respond to those elements. It's very important. Uh, we try to make sure that small businesses have opportunities for federal uh, contracting dollars on all levels, and that's at the prime level and the subcontracting level. So when you respond to those notices outlining the portions of the requirement that you can meet, it helps us understand that maybe small this is not suitable for a small business set aside but perhaps there is some opportunity for subcontract for small business subcontracting within this requirement uh the previous speaker also talked about partnering with other businesses find out who's on the the uh, large vehicles that we already have uh the gwax that we have in place and look for opportunities to subcontract with those uh, companies, large or, large or small. Uh, take a look at GSA, multiple award schedules, and reach out to them. Uh, there are several other vehicles that are that are on this slide that we have within HHS that we use. Um, again, make sure you look at those things, reach out to the companies on those vehicles, make yourself available as a sub uh to see to to make sure that although you may not be able to get a prime opportunity you might you might be able to uh participate as a subcontractor next slide so just some tips about responding to notices uh i think i just said that although you may not be able to perform the entire scope of work uh, you may be able to carve out by virtue of a response a portion of that work that can be set aside for small businesses. So just to kind of give you an idea, when I as a small business specialist and formally as a PCR, when I'm looking at a requirement and trying to determine how to uh, include an opportunity for small business participation, I'm going through all the elements of that requirement. I may get market research information that says no small businesses responded to the notice, but I'm also going to conduct market research on my own to see, you know, maybe there are small businesses that can perform certain elements of this requirement. And when you respond to sources sought notices, that's what that helps. It gives us the information that we need to advocate for opportunities for you either at the prime or subcontracting level. Um, if all the experience you have is as a sub, then submit that experience. Um, and if the language, if you feel that the language in a notice is restrictive, reach out to your small business specialist, reach out to the SBA PCR responsible for that agency and let us know. There are times where we're unaware of exactly what's in the notices prior to publication. You sometimes are our best indicator of what the optives and the shops are doing. And so you help us fight these battles for you to make sure that small businesses have an opportunity to participate uh, for federal contracting dollars. Make sure you stick to the requirements of the notice. 
don't go over the page limit. And I, I said in a in a training that we did recently or in some engagement that we had recently with small businesses, your story is great. There will be an opportunity to tell your story. But when you're responding to a sources sought notice, CEOs are not interested in your story. They want to see capabilities. As a former CEO, being swamped with 13, 15 awards that have to be made on a variety of different contracts and different dollar values prior to the end of the fiscal year, I don't, I'm not necessarily uh, interested in hearing about how your company was started and where you come from. Uh, I don't necessarily have time to hear that story. But what, I what I'm looking for is, do you have the capabilities to meet this requirement? Have you addressed the requirements that I've laid out in the sources sought notice? Have you responded in a manner that lets me know that you have the wherewithal to perform this requirement? So stick to what the notice is about and make sure you address uh, the, the scope or the items in the requirement. If you know of other businesses or firms, especially uh, small businesses or firms that do what you do, your competitors are your allies, especially as it relates to opportunities for small businesses. So if you're responding to a notice, reach out to your competitors and let them know, hey, have you seen this notice? Please go out and respond. The more respondents we have, the greater chance there is that we can set this opportunity aside for small businesses and keep it as a small and, and make it a small business set aside. Um, in addition, letting your competitors, if, if your competitors don't respond, you tell us who other small businesses are in your response that have the capabilities to meet the requirement. Because sometimes your competitors may not respond even if you reach out to them. But all that is information that we can use uh, to advocate for opportunities for smalls. Next slide. That is it. Uh, wow, that went very quickly. <laughs> thank you uh, so much for this time. Uh, and thank you for the opportunity to uh, talk to you a little bit about what I do as a small business specialist and in ways that I think it would be beneficial for you to, to work on engaging with HHS. Uh, my email address is on this slide. If you have any questions about HHS, uh, please reach out to me if you have any issues. If you're a contractor that has a current contract with HHS and you have issues or concerns, please reach out to me and I will see if I can make sure I can get you in touch with the right individual uh, to handle your, uh, your request. So thank you so much. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you again to our panel, um, Archisa and Joshua. They're as Joshua just said, the contact information is listed on the slide should you have any questions. And thank you everyone for attending today. The recording and slides will be available within the next 24 hours, though usually even sooner. We look forward to seeing you next week as we dig into the Department of Homeland Security. The FAR supplement will be on Wednesday and then the corresponding playbook on Friday and registration links as always are on our website. And lastly, don't forget to buy tickets for our July 18th summer soiree. That would be on our website under the events tab. We hope to see you there. Have a great day and thank you for attending this webinar.